Hey, you wanna have the big red boy, but you can't be bothered with the pink marshmallow because, oh my god, you need to touch some grass. No one has time for this. Well, then I have the solution for you. The answer is clarity, and she is thick. Ah, I'm talking about her area boost, you know. But why does this matter, you ask? Well, look at this little pebble here. Yeah, that's a boulder now. But if you want to keep your pet rock this size that it is, then you need to stay level 2, and once you're level 3, it's game over. Also, remember this bad boy? He gains roughly 650k HP for every single level up that you have. So even if you make it through, it just got a lot harder killing him. For the power-ups, take everything but Magnet, Growth and Curse. You don't have to take Greed, but everything else is insanely advised since this is a very precise build. Once you get on the stage, choose Awake as your Arcana. Walk over here, pick up the gem, hide behind the clock and get the Rune Tracer. As you can see, my hand aligns with the bottom part of the clock and this is roughly what you want to do. But fear not, if you keep leveling up to level 3, there's little you can do. It depends on where the center water lands and it depends on if the enemies actually drop experience or not. Be aware of one thing, if the center water lands outside of the screen or at the bottom somewhere when you spawn on the map, keep track of this. There's a very high chance this will create a gem and that is important for later. Since some recent patches you actually have a lot of issues getting enough experience in the end and that's the reason why we can't do it on hurry mode. It would be amazing to half the time, but you can simply forget about that one. It is possible, however, you precisely need to know what you're doing, and then you wouldn't be watching this guide. At roughly 850 kills, you will see a red gem appear, and that will accumulate all the experience. Right now, you can see it to my right. The number of kills might vary, as I said, there's only a chance that the enemies will drop the experience. However, if you don't see the gem, then most likely the center water went off in the beginning, and somewhere off screen that gem is generated. Do not panic, you can still go there, but if you didn't see Santa Water drop, I just recommend restarting. It's just a few minutes. Some enemies are created more equal than others, as you might notice here. The beheaded guys, they instantly die the moment they touch Rune Tracer, however, the witches, they just survive way longer. How come? Most enemies scale with your health, however there are some exceptions. These witches, and especially the witches on the broom as we will see later, do not have a scaling, they have set HP. This can lead to a problem. The rune tracer, as you might notice, is not always in exactly the same position. It moves. And worst case, one of the two will leave the area it's stuck in and suddenly you're vulnerable. While you don't have to worry that you will instantly die the moment they touch you and leave yourself in a state where the entire world is falling apart, it can happen, especially with the later waves, that you will get overrun and you might even end up dying. Dying is not the worst thing ever since we have a total of 4 revivals, however, once this starts happening, the rune tracer will leave this spot more frequently as it becomes bigger and faster. So my advice to you is, whenever this happens, take a slight step down and try to avoid getting hit even more. This again relies on RNG, how the enemies align, where your center water lands, how many chests you have picked up as well. Just remember to always stay calm. Okay, don't panic, don't panic, don't panic. E stay calm. I told you to stay calm. Why are you not staying calm? Stay calm, please. Oh my god, oh my god. Okay, Rune Tracer left the table. Um, uh, everything is fine. Everything is fine. Nothing is going wrong. Now you just have to pay attention. Oh my god, it's left again, it's left again. Okay, that's not good. That is really not good. Um, um, okay. No, it's all fine. I slightly moved down. I just have to wait for the next Rune Tracer to spawn. That happened. Rune Tracer will not leave me again. It will not happen. Oh, that's a difficult boss. Well, would you look at that? Instantly died. It, it, it's unbelievable. The witches are more dangerous than this guy. Just as a side note, if you had to move, then there's... Whoa. Okay, all, all is fine. All is good. Just as a side note, if you had to move, then there's a good chance that you pick up a gem and this will create a new red gem that will from now on take all the experience. Don't worry, just choose one of them, best case the new one that is now being created and use it for the first level ups, then walk to the other one. You can do this entire thing a hundred of times and stand pixel perfect in the same position, but it will have varying results. There is no perfect position, so don't feel bad. Once you survive the witches and get to the medusas, it's a lot more calm since they are wider and push each other out of the way. However, this is no guarantee that you will not get hit. Pretty much minute 24 onwards is a bit of a gamble where it heavily relies on what exactly happens. Don't worry if your rune tracer again leaves from time to time, 
These enemies should just barely hit you, since they die rather quickly and clarity has increased health regeneration. You really need to stay calm that you don't make an extreme move like way too far down or something and completely destroy your entire progress. We approach the final wave and usually this is the easiest to deal with, believe it or not. They are so wide that Rune Tracer always hits them and pushes them away. At 29.59 take a deep breath, just pause the game and relax for a bit. The moment the enemies explode you have to get going, the Red Death will spawn. He will not always be visible, sometimes he's stuck somewhere, then simply move down so he teleports to you after you leveled up. On the screen right now you see the build but you will see me go through the entire picking process so you know exactly what goes through my mind and what I'm doing. Try to avoid maxing out weapons since it takes them out of the weapon pool and it makes it more likely that stuff appears that you don't want to have. So, are you ready? 3, 2, 1, go! They explode. Okay, let's go. The moment they exploded you saw me instantly move. I know my gem is over there. Let's head over there. It doesn't matter too much if you die right now. We will make this work. He didn't get stuck. He's coming for my buttocks. So let's go over there. The first one that I'll pick up is Magic Wand. Duplicator is amazing and since it's a rare passive weapon you want to pick it up right away. And now I will die. That is not a big deal. We will revive and then the red gem will make us invulnerable. Every single level up will make you invulnerable. Clock Lancet, insanely important. Let's take it right away. Empty Tome, perfect. You can take Tiragisu for additional revives and this used to be a thing. However, with the amount of revivals that you have, this is no longer needed. So we just focus on maximum damage. Can't Labrador. Brazer. Knife, amazing. Here's nothing offered for me, so I will just reroll. And there we go. I'll take Clock Lancet, Spinach, Clock Lancet level 5, and make sure the next time it shows up, you banish it. Yes, this is very important. The timing is calculated with the help of an Excel sheet and a script, so this is pretty much a perfect timing that you want to have. Banish the Clock Lancet, and keep in mind the moment it shows level 6, it's still level 5, this is where you want to banish it. Laurel, amazing, that is the last puzzle piece. Spellbinder, amazing, another one that will be banished at level 4 to compensate for the bonus duration that we get from dying. Worst case, you super slightly decrease your DPS, but best case, it doesn't mess up everything if you die two more times. Now that we have everything, you can just spam spacebar and get all the level ups. However, be ready to either hit escape or move instantly the moment it's done. Head over to the table and get all the- yeah, of course now. As I was saying, head over to the table and get as many chests as you can for the evolutions. You're looking for the two arcana. There we have the first one. There is one that I specifically look for, which is slash amazing. There it is. The second one is actually this one, the weapon bouncing. Now usually with the insane amount of damage and if done right, you will kill the reaper super fast. However, once multiple reaper appear, this will be insanely good for you. Never ever take projectile speed, never ever take duration. This one here messes up your rune tracer, this one here messes up your freeze timer. Holy wand! Now I have all the evolutions, with slash right now already in the pool, I don't need to take the weapon bouncing, and what I'll do instead, I will go to the reaper. If you don't have slash yet, look for the second chest. The bouncing is just a nice help. The main goal is to kill him as fast as possible, so the second reaper doesn't spawn. The second reaper is pretty much the biggest issue here, since he pushes away your reaper and might kill you. So, once I click done, I go above the table, and I will align my health bar with the half of the table and slightly bump up. This is already enough. What you're looking for here is a ton of damage from the knives, let me just show you, as well as a huge amount of bouncing from the rune tracer. In an optimal case it would just bounce in the corner over here, but honestly this will be more than enough to kill him so I'm not gonna do anything. By the way, move whenever the reaper moves, it's fine, just shoot the knives into him. Despite having a perfect calculation of a perfect freeze time and cooldown until it reaches the reaper again, well there is already dead. You need to leave some gap, otherwise there is a chance he will just jump away and that was it. Please check the pinned comment if there was an update to the guide, since there are constant changes in the game and weekly patches. So I hope this will be as successful as it was for me. 
wish you the best luck possible and if you have any questions or issues or just need to rant about how unlucky you got with the level ups or randomly dying, hey, the comment section is open for you.